color red, but it is red. Uh, we don't have any colored red, sadly. You look. You said you had red. Uh, we have this, but it doesn't color red. You can oh. sit down now that you're done. Where does Beth sit? Here. Alex, can you catch? I should have a pencil on Where does Beth sit? You have a pencil? Yeah. Uh, Beth and Zoe sit there. Okay. And you can give Alex his because he's back there. Just hand it to I can't like find Alex. it. Don't throw it at him. I won't. This is a... It's... Fire. This one's That's Zoe's. Zoe. It's a blue one. It's not that hard. Well, we can't find your the only one. Oh, wait, is it this teal one? Here. I'm not going to throw it at you, actually. All right. Does everybody have a notebook? Because it's very important that you have a notebook. Because guess what? Uh, I'm not sure she's ever coming back. I never heard from her. And guess what, guys? For all the IT fans out there. Who's an IT fan out there? Is that orange juice? Uh, no, it's iced tea, sadly. Sorry, man. Uh, could we get somebody to turn on the lights, please? Because we do need the lights on. Oh, wait. Is that, is it peach? Oh, it's peach. Oh, oh it's peach. But I've got apple juice in my fridge. It's okay. There's also strawberry juice and other juices that you can try. And we don't only got candy, but we got one less crunchy, nutritious bar. When are we starting? We're starting now. Let me just get my. Where's your candy? Yes, there is candy. I want candy. You gotta answer questions. Yeah. 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 I have a pen. Just if you need any pens, so everyone knows every time they need one, it's right in this pocket right here. So feel free. Dibs are for you. Dibs are for you. Sorry. Um, and Talia, can you hand Talia a form for the Christmas party? Myra. Can you hand to Leah a form for the Christmas party? Everyone is invited who comes to P7. Myra filled her form. Alex filled out her form. I count Myra and Harmony's as the same because, as you know, they're sisters. Oh, and who wants to do the video slash photo doing today? My phone is for Oh, you can use my phone. You want to do it today, Alex? Myra, can you take appropriate photos not zoomed up on my face, please? Because we got to tell you. She did that last week. All right. Please take appropriate photos not zoomed up on my face. And do we have a volunteer to write on the board? Oh, no. no, my. I'm bad at no? My okay, I'll do it for you guys then. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Okay. I think I actually did Announcement. Which is, these announcements are new to you, right, Toya? No. So at the end of the school year, we're going to have a quizzing competition. So you need to take notes for that in your notebooks I handed out to each of you. I mean, to Leia did, technically. And then, guess what? We're going to have a ward slash honorings day at the First Pentecostal Church. And the way you can win awards is answer lots of questions, come to every meeting, and take lots of notes. So you can make up for the ones you missed by coming to all these next meetings, to Leia. All right, per request. Any per request? Uh -huh. Any per request? Do you, you want prayer for her? My sister. Your sister? She's got a life threatening blood disease right now. We will pray for her. So pray for Alex's sister. Anybody else? Myra, do you have any per request? All right. We need to remember to pray for Logan. As you know, he's not doing well. The nation of Israel, because they're in war right now. We also need to pray for. I can't remember what else. Uh, my friend's grandpa, he has cancer, and they don't know how much he has long left. So now, let's get into prayer. Ready? Jesus, thank you for everyone who is here today. and Help to bless us, Lord. Help Alex's sister to get better and to be healed. And get that blood disease or whatever she has away. And heal her right now, Lord. Help Logan and help him to be healed, Lord, and help the nation of Israel. In Jesus' name, we pray and everyone say, Amen. amen. So, last week, yeah. is it working? Oh, there we go. So, last week we learned about another version of the Beatitudes. Does anyone remember what we learned about last week in the Beatitudes? So, last week, do you, wait, do you have any guesses before I continue on? What we learned about last week with the Beatitudes? It has to. It had to do with something poor. People. 
<laughs> Blessed are the blank in spirit. Horrible. It's so good. Good guess. That's close-ish. But it's blessed are the poor in spirit. Sorry. Can you get that, Mickey? All right. No idea. I have Reese's if you want. What else do you have besides Reese's? Smarties. Or this. I'll take the, yeah, the Smarties. Where do you put the? It's under the table. It's like it's like by your by your binder. Oh man, you have a good throw. Where'd Myra go? Does anyone know? All right. So this week we're learning on beatitudes. Blessed are they that mourn. And this is quite an interesting lesson, right? Why would you be blessed if you mourn? All right. Wait. No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. So as we talked about last week, we are. Jesus' first sermon recorded in the Bible. So was, we talk about Jesus' first sermon ever at, in any times recorded in the Bible. It's referenced to as the Sermon on the Mount. Has anybody here heard about the Sermon on the Mount before? We talked about it last week. No. Nobody else heard about the Sermon on the Mount before? Myra, you were here last week. You heard about it before, right? But thank you for answering to to Alex and Leia. Sorry. All right. And as those of you who were here last week found out that it is referenced in Matthew five, right? Jesus began with several blessings. So all the lessons through the Beatitudes we're going to learn about is blessings that gave people hope. These blessings are called the Beatitudes. Does anyone remember from last week what beatitude means? It has to do with something being blessed. I think I've heard of it, but I don't remember. And it has to do with something that I'm going to give you a face expression to right now. Happy. Exactly, Alex. Good job. So the word beatitude is defined as superman, blessedness, or in modern term, blessed, happy, or fortune. Today, also make sure to take pictures too, Myra. Um, today we will talk about the second beatitude. So last week we talked about the first beatitude, now we're going to the second one. And the second beatitude, which I want you guys to write down in your notebooks if you can. So get ready, everyone ready to write down in their notebooks? Mm -hmm. Everyone has a pen? Mm -hmm. You ready, Myra? Write down in your notebook? You ready? All right, here's what you're going to write down. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Did everyone write that down? What was it? Blessed are they. Blessed are they. That mourn. That mourn. For they shall be comforted. And um, I'm going to continue on here, but when you have that all written down, give me a thumbs up. That be comforted? Mm hmm. Okay. And if you finish writing it down, you can get up. Blessed are, Andy. Blessed are they that. What? Mourn. For they shall be comforted. Wait, what is the first one? Blessed. <laughs> yeah, I'll read it again one more time. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And write down Matthew 5, 4, 2. This is a marker. Oh, you can change it if you want to. All right. Thank you. And it's found in Matthew 5, 4. Wait, hit that down. Wait, too. blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. So when you mourn, you are comforted. By God. All right. Everyone almost got that down? Yeah. Can you say it slower? Blessed yeah. are they that mourn, that mourn. That be comforted. For they shall be comforted. Oh. <laughs> and that can be found in Matthew 5, 4. I need you to write Matthew 5, 4 down too. Because when you do the quizzing competition, we'll help you find the reference if you don't have it down fully. Matthew All right. 5, 4? Yeah. All right, so I don't want you guys to tell out loud what you're writing it down, but think about in your head after you're done writing, think about a disappointing or painful life situation that ended up in some ways being a blessing. Maybe someone got hurt and it ended up being a blessing because they got healed. 
and it helped bring somebody else to God through their healing. I know there's a story of a lady in our church who died and then came back to life and she came to God after that. But now let's continue on here. So God is a comforting and nurturing God. He is our Father. Write this next part down too. I'm going to slow down. Father, our provider, and he cares for us. Did everyone get that? No. So Father, no. provider, and he cares for us. Um, when we are sad, he sends the comfort of his spirit to ease our troubled souls and minds. Has there ever been a time when your heart was broken that God stepped in and brought you comfort to you? Anyone have a moment like that? I mean, I didn't. I mean, God didn't step in because I didn't like pray to Him at the time. This was back in grade seven. I got rejected. It was my first rejection. But like now, I just I went on with my day all sad and shit. But like whatever. Yeah. He didn't actually help me like that. Thank you for being willing to share Ooh, that. Easy, um, now I'm gonna share a little story with you guys. So, sometimes God sends someone to you, though, when you need comfort. It's a, maybe it's a family member, a mentor, a leader, um, someone that teaches you the Bible. Um, I remember a time when I needed comfort in my life, and I reached out to my mentor, Sister Blackshear. And some of you may have heard me talk about her before, because I talk about her a bunch because she's my mentor. And she helped me out a lot. But before the and during that time, I was going through a lot. I was having a hard time at school. I couldn't get my grades right. I um, was struggling with people bullying me. And my mom was really sick, and she was going blind because of the medicine she took. And as many of you already know, she got healed from that. But I was going through this really tough time, and I was just feeling down on myself. And there's those moments where you feel down on yourself. And the only thing you can do is talk to God and ask somebody else to help you. So I messaged my mentor and said, I'm really having this really hard time right now. And she really gave me very inspiring words that helped me out. And I used the, what she told me to this day. Um, but before I asked her to be my mentor, which was a, like maybe two or three months before, I didn't know I would need her at that time. Because it was at a PK retreat, pastor's kids retreat. I was, um, we we're about to leave. So she gave me a little treat box, a little food snack box to take home and she told me that I'm here for you if you need anything and then we talked for a bit and then she hugged me and prayed for me and during the moment she hugged me I felt God telling me that she should be my mentor and each one of you should have a mentor like me or Safai that you look up to that you want to follow after that you want to be like and be like hey that person follows after God their f heart is for God I should I want to be like them or someone you talk to when you're going through a hard time. Like I have a mentor, Sister Blush. Um, I really look up to her. And she could be an amazing speaker in the UPCI, but she puts her husband before herself. And that's one way I definitely look up to her is because she puts others before herself. She doesn't worry about herself first, but she puts her husband above herself. And she puts her church and her family and everybody else above herself. She doesn't just focus on herself. Um, but I really look up to her and hope to be like her one day. Sister Blackshear is a truly amazing woman. All right, now let's continue on here. So there's a story about a widow. Does anybody here know what a widow is? Yes, exactly. 100% Beth. She was two candies for getting it 100% right. So a widow is a lady who lost her husband. And most widows have a child or children. So the husband died, not purposely usually, but he died and left her with her children. Now let's get on to the story about this widow. And there are also widow spiders. You can get this, Marty's for taking a brave guess, Alex, because that was a good job. All right, so there was a widow who had a son, her only child. And back in the Bible say, days, it was challenging for a single woman to take care of herself. She often needed a husband or son to take care of her, for, to protect her, and to provide for her. Because back then, women didn't make money themselves. They stayed home and took care of their children, as many of you probably know from history class or social studies, you know? So... Here's the reference to the verse I'm going to talk to you guys about, about the woman. 
the widow and her son, and it is found in Luke 7, 11 through 15. So write this part down in your notebooks. So Jesus and his disciples were approaching a town called, I'm going to do my best to pronounce this, Nin. When they saw a crowd of people coming their way, it was a funeral. Parable bearers, which were people who carry a stretcher or what the dead body is on, um, were shuffling along, so they were just like, on like this along the way, carrying the body of the young man who had just died. It was a widow's son. The broken-hearted woman was crying. She wailed. Does anyone know what wailing means? Crying. Like, out loud. Exactly. Come up and choose like, candy, like two candies ball. for getting it right. Yeah. It's like falling uh, with a loud voice as she mourned the loss of her son. Her cries touched the heart of Jesus and filled it with compassion. He came to her and said, so um, he, I'm going to pretend Myra is a woman. He came, so Jesus came to her and said, don't we? And then he turned to the pillar bearers, which are the people again who carry the stretcher of the dead body. Um, and he said, young man, I say to you, arise, which you can see here, uh, where is it, right here, you can see him saying, don't cry, and then him saying, young man, I say to you, get up. So it's a bit of different phrase here than arise, it says get up. Um, and the young man sat up and began talking. Jesus gave the son back to his mother. It doesn't make much sense. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat got dry. It doesn't make much sense to think about being blessed because you mourn or you're sad or grieving, right? Oh, welcome, Mark. Um, or because you lost something, right? Why are you blessed when you lost something? It doesn't make any sense. It could be confusing. But you know what? We are blessed because we shall be comforted. Like the verse we talked about earlier in Matthew. 5, 4, which you can write that down in your book there, Beth. You can see my set. Um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Um, we are blessed because we shall be comforted, like it says in Matthew 5, 4. We have hope. And even when you're going through a hard time, all is not lost. You have hope. Uh, Jesus has the power to give us new life through baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit. God doesn't always physically resurrect the dead. However, the Bible records 10 encounters of people being raised from the dead and coming back to life. There are many more testimonies, even in modern times. So does anyone know what modern times mean? Time. Yeah, you can pick up candy for getting that correct. Thank you, Alex. Um, of people who have been resurrected. We all know that death happens to each of us. And the Bible tells us that in Hebrews 9:27, and everyone here knows that death will eventually happen to all of us, right? You found a, um, um, a black uh, a could you guys please write this reference down to the verse in your notebooks, please? Because you will need this for later for your quizzing competition, which there will be a very special prize for those who win. So you definitely want notes. All right, let's continue on here that we will all die in face judgment. And that's what it exactly says here. And as it is appropriate unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So if we will all die, the logic tells us we will almost likely face the death of someone who we love in this life, right? It could be a friend, a family member, and so you may have already faced someone in your family dying, right? Um, we will all mourn our losses and we will all go through hard times just like I talked about even I myself will go through hard times um, but you know what there's good news in all the troubling things that happen in, in this world does anyone want to guess what the good news is we talked about it from Matthew 5 4, so it should be in your notebooks um. Yeah, that's a good guess. Here you go. So, 
what it actually says in Matthew 5, 4, and you can write this down, Beth. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um. Yeah, so you will be comforted. No matter what you're going through, Jesus is there for you. So we have comfort that we are not alone in this life and that pain will not last forever. We have comfort in the presence of God who fills us with his love and grace today and every day. So not just today he fills us with grace, not just while we're in this room talking about Jesus, but every day that you will come to a need. So it's very important, and thank you, Alex, for being very brave and sharing your prayer requests with us. But that's one of the reasons we share prayer requests, because we need to come to God with our needs. So that is one thing very important. It's not just important to come to your needs here at P7 Club, but it's also good to go to your prayer closet. And you don't have to literally go to a prayer closet. You can pray as you're walking in the hallways, like if you have a break from class or something, like pray in your head or something like that. Or you can pray when you're in your bedroom, just lying there and say, God, please help me with the situation. So it's definitely good to do stuff like that. Um, now we're going to take another reference from John 14, 26 through 27. And in this verse it says, Jesus said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. And does anybody know that name? What is that name? What? Jesus. Yes, exactly. It's Jesus. You should really get more candy. I'm getting more it's candy soon. Um, now let's continue on here. Whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. He, by he, he means Jesus. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatever so I have said unto you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give I unto you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that means don't let it be afraid. The Holy Ghost is our comforter. The promise of the Spirit is for everyone, which is found in Acts 2, which is your homework. So you can write that down somewhere, that Acts 2 is your homework. So read all of Acts 2. And... You will get more candy next week if you read Acts 2 and tell me what you learned from it. And I'm going to give a small example of a verse in Acts 2 that talks about promises. And it says here, it shall come to pass in the last days. And the last days is the end time. <coughs> says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and daughters, shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. All right. Any questions? No one? All right. Let's end in prayer. Everyone stand up, please. All right. Lord, when we mourn, bring the hope of your salvation to our hearts and minds. Fill us with your spirit the Comforter, who will wipe away every tear and sadness and replace it with joy and faith. Thank you that you care about our hearts, our losses, our mournings, and our hard times we go through. Thank you for being the answer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, um, oh, there we go. You also have another homework, and we're going to get how much time we got here. Uh, we're at 12.08, so we got a bit of time to play a game. But before that, try to remember this other homework you got. This week, pray for those who are mourning or going through hard times, that the Lord would comfort their hearts and give them hope, life, and journey. And remember to read Acts 2. I will send you guys a link to Acts 2 so you can read it. But... Tell me what you learned from Acts 2, and you will get extra candy. Who wants extra candy? Everyone in here, right? So, before we get to cleaning up, um, I'm going to describe our game real quick. And then I'm going to have pens. Can I get everyone to listen for a second so we can get cleaned up and then play the game? Pens go in here. Um, if you have a paper, like to lay it there, they can go in this little slot here. 
candy goes in this blue bag here along with drinks and make sure you can grab some drinks and if there's any chips left over put them in here too and notebooks except for the one Myra has that's the gray one that has attendance of everybody who here the notebooks that you guys use your names on and these notebooks here in the Bible and stuff go in here so I'm going to scrub the game really quickly and then we're going to get on to cleaning up and end game and let's we can clean up fast so we can play our fun game soon all right so how the game is going to work is everyone's going to stand up wait not yet and I'll give them two options has anyone played would you rather yeah. yeah. So this game be kind of like that, but you're going to go, say, I say, would you rather have great friends or really bad friends? The people who would have great friends would be like, oh, I'll go over here. Because I said, this side's great friends. You go over here if you want great friends. And if you want really bad friends, you'd run over here and say, oh, I want the bad friends. Or if I said, dog or cat, dog, cat. And you go to the side. And there's a purpose in this game. Because the people who go on opposite sides from each other, and be honest, the people who go on the opposite side from each other will be teamed up for other games. Because we want to make people become friends here, even if they don't like the same things. So we're going to get cleaned up, put everything away. Everybody remember where everything goes? And then we're going to have some fun. All right, let's get to it.